Are there any Terrans right now? Because it seems like most of the world doesn't even see this coming. Uh, I, I, I don't know whether you were, were you recording like at the very beginning. We we're talking about uh, in my book. I uh, labeled Ted Kaczynski, you know, yes. the Unabomber, yes, as as the first Terran. Right. Okay. Right? He, he's the first historic Terran, and the people coming out now, like. Uh, uh, Jeffrey Hinton, you know the father yeah. of Backprop, and I would label him a Terran. Ben Gersall, whom you know well, is pretty much Terran, I'd say. But he's so he's going to help develop some of the neurosymbiotic large language models. So, isn't aren't his actions very cosmist? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the dichotomy uh, I, I of all of us humans. That's what this is, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ben was my best friend, uh, but we we talked about this for you know for hours, you know, for over many years. And he, on the whole, he's a bit more pessimistic. Sorry, a bit more optimistic than I am. I think probably more by nature. Uh, I'm I'm more uh, pessimistic. I think partly because when I was twenty, you know, given my age, when I was twenty, you can imagine which war was going on. Time was the Vietnam War, and I got conscripted. So I, I, you know, when when I was twenty, I was thinking, oh my god, I, you know, I don't want to go in this damn war. Wow. I mean, so the the Vietnamese peasants were paying over about 70 percent of their crop to the landlord. So of course they loved communism, which had freed them from all that. So I don't want my life being risked by my government forcing me to fight for a cause that I didn't believe in. So, I, you know, as, as a young student, I, there, there was a cemetery near the university. This was at Melbourne University at the time. So I'd, I'd go walking in that cemetery at night in paranoid rage, imagining how many grenades could I lop into, lop into the parliament and kill a maximum number of people. I was absolutely... You know, it, it transformed my personality. So uh, I suspect one of the reasons why I'm now more pessimistic than, say, Ben is is due to that. I mean, I've, I've, I've had more horror in my life, I think, hmm. than, than Ben has. <clears throat> and also, opt optimism that doesn't make any sense doesn't make any sense. So, you know, I, I try to reason reason my way through. And I'm, you know, frankly, I'm just torn. You know, the little kids in the park, Terran. God building, cosmist. I mean, how do you, how do you choose? I mean, we have to, right? Humanity but, at some stage has to choose. But can we choose, Professor? Because can you really put the genie back in the bottle at this point? I mean, ChatGPT is out. It's now on localized computers. It's now hooked up to the internet. Everyone now knows LLMs can work. That wasn't the case necessarily a decade ago. You could argue there's no way you can't stop the development of this. Well, that, that's that's a cosmist argument, you know, the, the momentum. <laughs> and so in that sense, you're, you're sort of cosmist. But, or my uh, realists. You're, it's like well, trying to contain well, the pandemic. It's like trying to contain the pandemic. Mo Gaudet in his book called like the earliest ages of the pandemic, what we're happening now with AI, where everyone's just like, has no idea what's about to hit them, doesn't realize it's inevitable. And there's, it's like the, the, the naivete of trying, to, um, of, of trying to isolate, you know, a respiratory virus. It's, it's just, it's ridiculous. So can you really isolate and stop the development of AI? Oh, so, someone's trying to call me. Killing my phone. <laughs> Yes, I, personally, I, I feel it's inevitable, and I, I, I don't see any way around it. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just glad I'm alive now. So, you know, as I was saying before, I fear for my grandchildren, but probably I, I won't see it. Now, you're, you're an, you're an X Gen, right? Gen X. You're, you're about yeah. Ben's age. Is that right? Um, I'm, I'm turning fifty-two this month. So, right. and I've got uh, two young boys, they're five and six, and I look at their lives 
and I'm looking at them saying, you will never experience the teenage years I experienced. Your life will be completely, utterly different than any human life ever. And that is hard for me to get in my head around because I am right, right? They will be living a life 10, 20, 30 times or the singularity times different than any other human life in existence. Probably they won't have jobs um, because as, as the machines become increasingly intelligent, to be employable, employable as a human, you will need a very high intelligence. And so as the machines get smarter, 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 the, the human level employable intelligence threshold will just keep rising until you know, virtually nobody is employable. Machines are just doing everything. Now, once that happens, uh, of course, governments will have to use the, the, the UBI, you know, the Universal Basic Income, just handing out money for everyone. Uh, I don't see that so much as a problem because um, if you're interested in cultural anthropology, there's somewhere between, I read, five to 10,000 different cultures on the planet. And some of them, work maybe two or three hours a day. You know, food is, you know, these tropical islands, the food is climb up palm tree. So they don't have to work very hard. And so how do they fill up their day? Well, make up rituals, religion, you know, they have rich lives, rich cultural lives, and they, they don't feel depressed or anything, so they're fine. So, uh, you know, the human brain is adaptable. So, so I see c cultures surviving. That way, once once there's no work, and and a lot of people thrive that way. They'll, they'll adapt uh, quite readily. But uh, and if we can live in a global state that's fully democratic, that would be wonderful. So I mean, get rid of wars. <laughs> so Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's going to be talking about how this upcoming recession is going to be fast. It's going to be bloody. It's going to be nasty. But at the same time. He's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim. Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that. Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you wanna profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener, coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel 
so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's of course been like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.